uh, again, I come from pretty much the same background as Steph. I don't have a lot of background in coding. So I decided to take a project which is kind of related to what I usually do in uh, within the PL. As Steph has already pointed out, there are a lot of problems when it comes to documentation, especially the documentation around Filecoin and the Lotus implementation of the Filecoin. You know, to quickly go through some points there, it's really hard to find what you're looking for, especially in terms of a new storage provider or even somebody who just want to try out Lotus implementation, right? It's a bit tricky. So, uh, you know, people usually end up just asking on Slack, hey, how do I do this? Where do I find that? You know, so many problems. So that should not be happening in the first place. So that was the aim of the main aim of the project that people should directly just go and look at the docs and they should be able to understand pretty much all of it, right? And uh, another problem is um, a lot of uh, documentation which is currently in there uh, does assume a certain technical uh, expertise on the part of the user, like you should know how to build it. In this situation, build is, building it is better than directly downloading an artifact and using it and so on and so forth. And uh, of course, one of the biggest pain point is there's literally no troubleshooting uh, sections, like a dedicated troubleshooting section, which tracks known issues and their known solutions, or maybe an article about how you can debug a particular kind of problem. Of course, there's no way for our, such a large community, right? We have such a large community who are storage providers, retrieval providers, and all of those people. They have so much knowledge and so much experience. But currently, we are not able to, uh, you know, utilize it very effectively. A lot of those conversations just directly go on Slack, and that's not an effective way. Okay. okay. Uh, so what's the solution, right? So the first uh, problem that, I saw was the documentation itself is like literally just one big documentation with so many sections and so many pages. It's hard to figure out what to look at. So the first thing we did was literally break the website in five, six big chunks. One would be Lotus, which would just handle the Lotus part of things. So you can be a client, you could be running a Lotus light node, you could be running a Lotus full node, whatever you want to do, just focus on this section. Anything Lotus goes here. If you're an SP, you just focus on this section. It's going to have all the links to the other section that you're supposed to know about. It's going to be properly um, collated with the other section. So you don't have to you know, start jumping from section to section directly. Then, of course, a very dedicated section for developers. Currently, it was a bit of a mess. Uh, some of the lo local network issues have been sorted and the documentation has been updated. Uh, going forward, this section would get more pages, especially about uh, API examples and how to use simple curl to try to debug, you know, if you're trying to build an app uh, on top of Flores. And of course, a new section for tutorials, right? <laughs> a lot of people, especially in Launchpad, face, um, you know, a tons of problem when trying to start their Lotus node or connect to API chain love and so on and so forth. So right now I'm writing tutorials on how to run a miner, how to add uh, you know, worker nodes, how to set up a Lotus. So these would be like, you know, you just follow this guide and it's going to be done at the end of it. You don't need to know other stuff. Then a dedicated section for knowledge base, right? This is where we are going to collect everything. This is what it is going to look like, uh, you know, uh, going forward. And the left side pane uh, would now be dedicated to uh, basically, um, uh, it, it would contain an um, umbrella sections to, um, you know, bundle the pages together uh, by their relevancy. And uh, of course, apart from that, uh, the knowledge base is, as I said, it's very important. So we're going to take all those file coin discussions on um, uh, Slack and create knowledge articles and solutions articles based on those. And we are also going to encourage the community to, uh, you know, basically contribute to this part of the section so they can um, start uh, putting on um, uh, their knowledge there. And lastly, the blog section. So uh, blog section is mostly about, you know, show and tell people, different miners, what they are running, how they do it, how what are their uh, the scripts that they, they have written to automate stuff, how they are monitoring their miners and all of that. Currently, it is all very distributed. Some of it is inside the Lotus repo. Some of it is on the Filecoin blog section. And it's a little hard to try to find all of this, um, you know, information out there. So I just want to put it all in the same place. You just go to this website and you're done with the Lotus part. 
So this is what it, uh, it would typically look like. I and mean, this is just a very first draft. Um, we are still working through the PR, there were some issues. So this is what it's gonna look like. And as you can see, like the storage provider section has now been broken into four different categories first. Getting started, now it will have all the economics uh, of the file coin, hardware requirement, mining architecture, what should you know before you actually start thinking about being a storage provider, right? Then you go to the how to set it up, what are the different configuration that you should know about and you can adjust. Then you have daily operations, which would contain all the pages which are about doing, you know, typical operations when you're a storage provider. And then of course, a dedicated section for the seal workers, which doesn't have a lot of information, but it's going to uh, get more pages in the future. What are the advantages of going with this approach, right? So the first one is of course, making it easier for people to actually find everything. And the second big one would be when we add the knowledge uh, base section, right? People can directly just put their uh, error code in the search bar. And if there is a solution that exists already, we are going to have it. Otherwise, when they find the solution, they can contribute that solution back to the website. And this way, we'll have a good feedback mechanism and a very big uh, collection of uh, yeah, you know knowledge articles out there. And of course, as I said, the blog section would be about show and tell and anything which is, you know, not your typical technical part of it, just how we do things. So <laughs> that's going to be there. And uh, the I've also enabled uh, flexible tagging. Basically, if you create an article, you can tag uh, what part of uh, Lotus does it deal with or what subsystem uh, the problem could be in. So it is truly flexible. You can, uh, I mean, of course, we, we will be reviewing the PR when you add a new uh, article out there. So just to make sure that, you know, it's some not some weird name out there. But uh, basically, people are free to tag it uh, however accurate you, they want to tag it. Uh, so there are no predefined tags by PL anymore. So that's a good thing. And uh, of course, the search function works in blogs as well. So it's possible uh, that something that you're trying to do or trying to find might already be written out there and you can quickly search for it. This is just, uh, I quickly took some uh, snapshots of how it looks like, screenshots. Um, this is what the knowledge base is. And as you can see on the left pane, uh, types are if it is a solution to a very exact problem or the other type would be article. These would be long articles, how to articles, long debugging articles and all of that. Areas would be the tags, whatever tag you wanna put it in, right? It could be that, okay, this is related to base OS issue. It could be related to an Linux issue, so on and so forth. And uh, on the other screenshot, you can see, I simply put the error code soft FD limit. You get this error code when you first start Lotus. A lot of people get it. So you just put it there and it is pointing you to the solution on how to fix it. So no need to search through the whole documentation. Okay, so what's the current status? So uh, yeah, I uh, all the changes that I wanted to get done, I have put them in a PR. And uh, But unfortunately, I think I might have broken some CSS things <laughs> while playing around because I've made a lot of changes to the website. And um, so right now, Docs team is helping me sort through all of that. So they closed my PR and have started pulling one by one all the commits on their PR. And they're making sure that uh, CSS is working exactly how it is supposed to be. And uh, hopefully this will be merged in next one or two weeks and you'll be able to see the new structure out there. What's next? Uh, I'm pretty much going on the same line as what Steph has been uh, trying to do. And I'm gonna uh, you know, work with him more closely now to get it done properly. And um, of course, uh, you know, I have uh, seen a lot of challenges that we as cadets faced when we started, uh, you know, trying to uh, work with Filecoin and especially the Lotus implementation. Um, so there are a total three projects that came out of all of this. First is, of course, we are auditing the documents completely end to end. All the Lotus documentation, each and every single page, each and every single line would be audited. And if it requires a change, it would be, um, you know, uh, changed as per, you know, to make sure that it is more easily readable and the content is understood, or if there's anything missing there, that would be added as well. Um, <clears throat> apart from that, as I said, I'm planning to add more detailed tutorials on how to do things. So people don't have to go and look at different parts of the documentation to get a simple task, like, you know, getting a node, uh, Lotus node started. The next problem, uh, again, <laughs> Steph has already pointed it out 
we have some problem with artifact builds. I have identified um, a few things and uh, already uh, let the Lotus team know. And um, uh, we are going to talk to Infra people because uh, Infra team actually handles the uh, Circle CI for us. And I have taken a look at that uh, particular uh, build code. Uh, there are definitely some challenges there. So we're going to audit that as well and try to fix that CI CD pipeline so we don't have all of that. And I'll work with Steph to get all of this properly, uh, you know, uh, so it can all be monitored and uh, automated as much as possible. So any failures out there can be easily pointed out and fixed. So thank you so much, um, everybody who has actually uh, helped me in one way or another to find this project and point out all the problems that are there. Because ultimately, that is what led to this project. And hopefully it will improve, uh, you know, the ex user experience down the line. And uh, thank you so much for every, you know, helping me uh, make this work. And uh, shout out to everybody, uh, you know, all the cadets and <laughs> every mentor. And of course, Lindsay, wow. Uh, <laughs> you, <laughs> you gave us so many points. So that was a, this was a really nice card. So thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Yeah.